beasts are coming to life in the classroom. Class two at Hotwell's Primary School in Bristol are at the end of a unit focusing on mini beasts. Across the weeks, class two has been using bugs as a focus to their science and literacy studies. We're going to be shown two classes in which their teacher, Kerry Smith, uses drama to deliver elements of the renewed primary framework. I think some teachers feel that drama can turn into a bit of a free-for-all and it can get very noisy and slightly chaotic. She's finding that drama is a tool that can help close the gap between what boys and girls can achieve. So in your mind you can just be thinking now what mini beast you'd like to be. The first activity was a mirror activity where the children needed to look very carefully at each other and I explained to them that I didn't want to know who was the mirror and who was the mini beast. It meant they had to look carefully, move slowly. First, she demonstrates a mirror exercise. She's encouraging the scientists' critical looking skills. They had to reflect back how a mini beast looks to decide how they were going to pose and how they were going to move. I'm going to come and quickly put you into pairs, Mira and Mini Beast. Drama sits in the national curriculum as part of the English programmes of study and it has to be taught within school. We're trying to cleverly weave it throughout the curriculum. The project came from the additional text-based unit, Really Looking. I chose to teach it this term, summer term six, because of the work I'm doing on animals and plants locally, and it just weaves so perfectly with that, and the unit was devised with that in mind. I used as my starting point the school garden for life, where we took the children and they did a mini beast hunt. I then built on their observations, taking them to the ICT suite, and I had a pre-designated site that I'd logged into for the children. They did their own research, really looking carefully. I then decided, crucially, to add the drama. A spider. We have a silver and Kezia. Silver and Kezia. And I like you just to try and work out what mini beasts they are. I was taken by surprise by Kezia. Did you work out what they might be? I was intrigued by the action. I was taken aback because I was guessing um, a mini beast that we might find locally. Especially a ladybird. Rufus. Butterfly. A praying mantis. Kezia had decided to bring her knowledge of a praying mantis and how she looked closely at a praying mantis and how she'd read about that when we visited the computer suite. It was lovely to see her bringing that through into her drama and thinking very carefully about the characteristics of the praying mantis. Well, um, praying mantises, when they're, um, um, when they're afraid of something, they start going like that. Because Kezia has thought so much about her mini beast, she's able to bring that knowledge to her drama and she's thinking really carefully about how she moves. So I think she deserves a clap and silver. <laughs> I place leaves on the floor just to set a little bit of a context for them, to add a bit of fun. I wanted them to take a magnifying glass around a habitat, a forest. Right, so Charlie's crouched down quite low, so I'll get down low with my magnifying glass and look really carefully. It's very important in these activities to actually model for the children what you want. Then, I'm going to imagine I've just heard the tambourine shake. They also needed to think carefully about how a mini beast would move because as the tambourine was shaken, they had to move off as that mini beast. He seems to be sort of slithering, doesn't he? Ollie. Is he a grasshopper? A grasshopper? Hello. 
Class 2 has more boys than girls. It's a split reflected across the whole school. Right, would you like to tell us what you are? Put us out of our I'm an earwig. An earwig. Oh, more Kerry oh, is the literacy God. subject leader for the school. She's keen to promote techniques that will boost boys' writing skills. As a school, it has um, been an issue for us in our writing that boys' achievement is not quite as high as girls. And as we're a high attaining school and we really want to move our boys on, we've looked very carefully as a staff at techniques for improving boys' writing. And as literacy subject leader, I've introduced the teachers to various techniques to really bring out the interest of boys. And drama is one of those ways. I was very interested in the shape of this mini beast over here. So without rustling any leaves, could you all just sit really quietly and watch while Charlie really looks at Elliot might have legs. Silvo, what do you think he might have been? I think he might have been a beetle. Mm. Beetle? No. And crouching down to eat the leaf. Oh, you were actually eating the leaf up from where it was down. Did you know that's what he was, Charlie? Well done, Elliot. You thought really carefully about your insect. So far, Kerry has encouraged her young scientist to look carefully. Now, science gives way to literacy. The next step was to take the children forward to another activity, Lights, Camera, Action, where I was able to weave in the objective of working together and as a group. And Minnie and George, you've got the line, hurts no living thing. This involves the children who've already studied the Christina Rossetti poem, Hurt No Living Thing. It was a way of them re-enacting it and using some language. And I'd like Ollie, Charlie, W and Asia to work on Noor Grasshopper, so light of me. Tomorrow, the children will be presenting their own poems. For now, Kerry has created small teams, an actor, a reader, and a director. OK, you can be the actor. I will be, just, I'll be the director, and you can... And I was very impressed with the way that they allocated their roles of director, actor, and reader. And the director was to gently mould the actor into the shape of a mini-beast. we need to do lights, camera, action. Because we're going to bring a poem to life because that's what poetry is all about. It's not about always reading them in a book. It's about acting them and having fun. And the poem is... Hurt no living thing. Careful observation begins to connect with words. Ladybird nor butterfly. Nor moth with dusty wing. Moth with dusty wing. Nor cricket chirping cheerfully. Nor cricket chirping cheerfully. Nor grasshopper so light of leap. Nor grasshopper so light of leap. Nor dancing gnat. Nor dancing gnat. Nor beetle fat. Nor beetle fat. Nor harmless worms that creep. Nor harmless worms that creep. It's been a full lesson, but Kerry still wants to do her decision alley. I did debate, actually, after doing the activity lights, camera action, whether the children might need a little pause or break, but they were still very focused, they were still really keen, and it was a key part of the lesson for me because it was where the language was going to be brought in. And with a lot of boys in my class, I find it really important that we have lots of talk for writing. That's where drama is so useful. You might go up together and ask somebody this side, and somebody here. They were put in two rows to make an alleyway, one line of the alley was to persuade the spider that a pond was a good habitat. The other row had to persuade the spiders that wasn't a good habitat. The pond is a good place to live. No, because you might, might chop down a tree on it. Yes, because there are lots of shady spots under rocks. 
it was very clear that the children were using lots of language that they could bring through into their poetry. No, because no. you might drown and there might be like loads of predators and there could be birds and come down. Humans. So the word predator was used, shady, lots of adjectives started to come out. The pond would be a good home. Yeah, because there's lots and lots of shady bits and there's lots of oak trees. People Drama helps because it offers the boys a chance to talk. Boys and reluctant writers, they need to talk before they're writing. Would you like to give us your decision then? Yes. Going to move to the pond. Oh, you've afraid of them. Well done. Give yourselves a big clap. The lesson played a crucial place this morning because it enabled the boys to talk before they're writing, to engage in some practical activities that made them think carefully about the mini beasts that they'd observed. You could hear the words flying around when they were discussing ideas for Decision Alley. Words like habitat, shady, cool, suitable, predator, and all of those words then, hopefully, will be carried through into their poetry. Well, this morning we're really gonna celebrate the writing of the children. I've seen the process through from reading good quality mini beast poems, the children have observed mini beasts, and now it's a chance for them to celebrate and read their poems out. Lowell, was there anything you were proud of in your poem? Any words that you used that you were really pleased with? Um, Woozy and speedy. Fantastic! He's thinking as a poet. I've selected some extracts from the children's poems. They're going to read these aloud and put a few actions to them. He said, Wizzy, speedy shield bug, likes to be snug as a bug in a rug. Shall we make ourselves into snug shield bugs, snug as a bug in a rug? How can we show Wizzy without actually moving around? What could we do? Fancy. Oh, that's better. And stop. So we're going to be Wizzy and Speedy. We've got whizzing and speeding. Um, we've got here fluttered and floated. The children have remembered the actions they've done in drama. Drifting carefully along the sky. Never touch or hurt its wing, otherwise it won't ever live. It's lovely that the elements of not hurting the mini beasts has come through, so we'd never kill. And I think there again, because they've acted, that's reflected through into their writing. The boys have really immersed themselves in some language rich poetry and it, it does reflect in their writing. They've also presented their poetry really well because they know that they're poets and they're going to read some of their poems out this morning. Eerie, eerie, with your little body. It's funny you are plodding with your little body. Now whizzing round the corner, we know you aren't plodding with your little body. It's quite easy then, once you've linked drama into literacy, science and history, to see other ways that it can really bring the children's learning to life.